All right, so here we are. We got the 770 Big Bore in the free RMK. Uh, I just went ahead, put some two-stroke oil in it. And now what I'm doing, if you'll notice, the oil pump is removed. And I have a drill here. Um, essentially, I'm putting the drill on this. And I am priming the oil pump and purging all the lines and everything to make sure that that should be all good to go. Um, I did pull... Well, this line off right here, and I ran it for about 10, 15 seconds. Not a lot of oil came out, um, but oil is flowing. This just does not turn near the RPM as the motor to turn this. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just knock this out and run it for like five minutes. And that should be enough to purge the lines, at least. It should be. <laughs> I might pull them off on the other ends and uh, actually visually inspect to see if I am getting oil to the cases or not. All right, with the oil primed, um, exhaust manifold's on. I don't have the nuts on or anything holding the motor down yet, but something I need to address is this hole here. That is actually for a coolant bypass because this big bore kit was on a 99 or 2000 or something like that. So it would have had a hose coming off the bottom of the head, wrapping around to the coolant pump. So they have a little bit of a, like a revised coolant system on them. Oh, um, so I had a junk head there that came from the motor that originally came from this free iron K and I need to plug that hole up. So I pulled the temp sensor out of the junk head and it just so happens to be the perfect fit. Same thread, everything. So we're just going to throw another temp sensor in the bottom and I'll put a little bit of silicone on there when I'm actually buttoning it up. That way it does not leak. And uh, we're just going to tape, well, not tape, but zip tie this up. So in the vent, this one ever fails, I can just hook that one up. So <clears throat> that's pretty cool. That's one step closer to being ready to fire this thing up. We will be starting this today. Like, hands down, it's going to happen. So, hell yeah. And uh, spun it with the drill um verified it is pumping oil it's kind of greenish looking oil there's still some old stuff in there but yeah i'm gonna continue doing that and pretty much just make sure i got lots of oil going to this thing right off the go luckily i thought about this um as i was priming some more I look down and this is like a coolant jacket and like on an XC as you can see over there it's got a nipple it has another coolant hose going to it whereas these 97s do not so I stole the nipple from this to put on the 97 motor because the 97 motor was a 98 chassis which is on the other side of the door now I'm putting a 98 motor and a 97 chassis. Holy crap, this is getting confusing. Anyways, I need to put a plug in there. All right, coolant pump plug installed, oil pump installed. Everything is primed, good to go. I went through the carbs, cleaned them up. Unfortunately, the biggest main jets I have are 180s, which are still leaner than stock, but I have, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, slide C5, these are the richest slides I can find, I'm also making my needles as rich as possible, so when the time comes, the dealers are closed, so I can't buy jets today, but I am going to buy larger main jets, but like I said, my goal is to start the slide, not ride it. All right, so there you go. I got my clip in the lowest position on the needles, which is the richest setting you can have. If you want to lean it out, you'll take this little clip off and you'll move it up on the needle. All right, so the carbs are in. Oil pump cable is hooked up. It's all working and operational. Uh, got that set up richer than stock, so it'll burn a little bit more oil, but Oil is never a bad thing. Uh, worst case scenario might result in some fouled plugs. Um, unfortunately, my choke 
it was broke on this thing. It was that way when I got the sled. I'm not complaining because it was free. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and throw some spark plugs in it. Maybe uh, hook up. Oh, that's an issue. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> Alrighty. So we have to figure out a hose for here. And put the exhaust on. Hook up all the electrical down there. Coolant. And yeah, we're going to figure this out right here. I actually had the head over there. So yeah, this is why that hose is not working. That right there. Um, fortunately, with the red head, you cannot set it up that way. So we're going to have to figure something out for the coolant hose. And uh, worst case scenario, I might borrow it from the XC for the time being. I'd hate to do that, but uh, I don't think I have any of those coolant hoses laying around extra. Um, I might, might. Um, I guess I could steal one from my other XC. There we go. We'll go steal a hose off that thing. All right, we have made it over to the other property. This is my other clapped out XC 700. And my old truck that has since turned into a parts rig for this beast. <laughs> But yeah, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and yank the cells off real quick. Maybe I'll drag the cell. Let's see. Oh, she actually broke down big time. All right, maybe it can just stay here. All right, all right, so the plan is to replace this hose to the head with this setup from an XC. Um, hmm. Might work. All right, so this looks like it should work just fine. Um, this would go to the overflow on an XC because when the coolant system gets enough pressure built up, it'll push the spring up in this cap and it has a bypass hole here. This would go to the coolant reservoir. However, on these 97s, it has this, which has a big ass hose going to it. Plus, this will just, yeah, whatever. Anyways, I'm just going to be able to remove this, and theoretically, it should not push enough pressure to relieve here. Um, with any luck, it would push this one because this is only a 13 pound cap, which goes up here, and this is a 19 to 21, so it should bypass up here and just get pushed out of the sled long before it'll push out of this nipple. But, uh, you know. It's kind of one of those things we're going to have to see how it happens. But theoretically, it should work just fine. All right. So, need to say, I'm a little bit nervous about starting this thing. Uh, yeah. It's a beast to pull over. I just finished doing a compression test on it. You can see the gauge in there. This thing's a little bit over, or sorry, a little bit under 150 PSI in each cylinder. I took a picture, but it, this gauge bleeds off. So, my picture only shows like 145 by the time I got around taking it. Yeah. This thing, way harder to pull over than a stock 700. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, it's 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 ready. The exhaust is in. Uh, I primed all the oil system. Carbs are in. Electronics are all plugged in. Um, coolant is set up. I did not put coolant in it because I do want to do a test fire. Just to make sure this thing ain't gonna fucking just scatter itself all over the place first thing when I start it. But uh, yeah, I went down to the store and I got some fresh premium fuel. I did pre-mix it, make sure this thing has all of the oil going to it. And uh, I do not have a choke. So this thing's pretty hard to pull over. I don't know, I might be able to hang on to this with one hand with pliers, pulling these out to effectively pull the choke plungers to start it. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of fuel in the cylinders and then give her hell. Again, I can't say this enough. If you do not have one of these, I strongly recommend a gas can like this. They pour so much faster than those crappy ones that you have a little, yeah, anyways. You guys know what I'm talking about as far as crappy ones go. And these things are awesome. All right, I guess uh, here we go. First attempt at starting the 770. 
Hopefully the kill switch works because I don't have the key or choke to shut it off. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Huh. I'm gonna prime the cylinders again and we'll be right back. All right, I put fuel in one cylinder. Hopefully this will be enough to get it, pick up fuel from the tank. Uh, that was a big fat negative. I did see it squirt a lot of the gas out because I did not tighten the spark plug. I just run it in by hand. <sighs> I guess we'll try this a couple more times. Okay, so I was getting tired of priming it, so I put some vice clamps on the cables for the choke. Got it pulled. Um, I did tighten the spark plugs. And I put a little bit in the motor, maybe a little too much. Make sure it's not tightly locked. All right, here we go. We're gonna keep priming it. All right, so what I've resorted to doing is putting my badass 24 volt drill onto the crank and I'm going to basically turn the motor over with the drill to try to prime the fuel system because I just don't feel like spilling gas all over the motor everywhere 10 times trying to get the thing to prime up. So. Do this for about 30 seconds, give her a go. Maybe she'll be all flooded out by then. Round and around and around we go. Round and around we go. Okay, I'm gonna say that's probably good. Alrighty, not entirely sure this is gonna start, but uh, gonna see if our self priming with the drill method is gonna work out. No. Well, that was fun. We're gonna have to figure something out. This thing is not picking up the fuel. You wanna know what's hilarious that I just thought of? I don't think I ever hooked up the pulse line. <sighs> Can't believe that. But I'm like 100% sure I did not hook up the pulse line in this thing, and that's why it's not picking up fuel. All right, here we go. Take, I don't know, 300. Um, pulse line's connected. It was disconnected. Spun out the drill for a bit. Got the choke pulled with these vice plant pliers, whatever the fuck those are called. And we're going to see if it'll start now. Sounded decent. 
I'm impressed. 770 runs. Coming up, we're going to have to take it for a test ride here pretty quick.